Hi, welcome to the 13th floor. I'm Marty Duda, and today we have Holly Fulbrook from Tiny Ruins. How's it going? It's good. Staying warm? It's cold, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is a little cold. But it, it seems like the, the, this weather, it always feels colder indoors than outdoors. I always expect yeah. it to be even worse when I go outside, but it seems to be chilly indoors. Yeah, but it's four seasons right now. It's yeah. like yes. sun and shower and then sun. And exactly. Well, it's a good, good weather to go out on the road, which is what we're going to be talking about, right? Yeah. How's that for a segue? Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so you're, you're hitting the road with Beck Runga. And you guys are going to be doing a tour starting at the end of June, which mm -hmm. we'll talk a little bit more about. And you're going to be doing your own set, and she's going to be doing her own set. Then you're going to do some stuff together. Yeah. Um, yeah. Was there some kind of, what, what caused the two of you to get together and, and do this? Um, well, um, we, we, as a band, we were on tour in Australia, and I, I got an email from Beck saying, you know, what are your plans for the rest of the year? I know we haven't met before, but... Um, you know, I really dig your album and maybe we can do something. And so when we got home, um, yeah, I immediately met up with her and we just thought that a tour was, was in order. Yeah. I mean, we, we had um, vague plans to do a New Zealand tour, but uh, to be playing in these venues is really, um, you know, I don't know if we could do that on our own. So to have back involved is great and just to, yeah work with someone new and different and interesting. Sure. So did the two of you have to find some kind of musical common ground when you're talking about working together? How did that work out? One of the first things that um, we did when we first met was send each other songs from, you know, other, other people's songs that we both liked, just to kind of get a feeling of what, where we were coming from musically. And uh, yeah, it was kind of surprising. I sent. Uh, back maybe five or six songs and she shot back like those are some of my favorite songs of all time and um, and then ones that she sent to me were songs that I'd never heard of and, <laughs> uh, it was it was like a, a, uh, I don't know it's always nice when you get introduced to new things like I'd never really listened to the band Love right before oh yes and uh, um, yeah, this kind of crazy Donovan song from, it sounds like from the 70s, but... Um, Which one is it? It's called uh, Where Your Love Like Heaven. Oh, Where Your Love Like Heaven. No, it's a 60s song. Uh -huh. There's okay. even crazier one called Goo 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 Barabba Jaggle. <laughs> it's fantastic. <laughs> I used to love Donovan. I had this Donovan record when I was a kid, and um, there was this one song on there, Tangerine Puppet, that huh. I would just listen to over I don't know that again. one, see, so that, yeah, there you go. Oh, it's There's really kind of, it's quite spooky. Um, yeah, beautiful you know, guitar playing. He made some wild records and he had all sorts of interesting people playing on his records like uh, Jeff Beck and mm. you know, people who were in the Led Zeppelin and all that stuff playing yeah. behind him, Paul McCartney. So, yeah. yeah. So we were, we, yeah, we were, we were kind of sharing um, stuff that we, I guess that we were just passionate about and, um, and there was the feeling like maybe we could do these as covers or, and it's evolved a little bit from that. I think we will do some covers. Um, but it's, it's also just to kind of learn these songs and take them apart is a really nice learning ex experiment. And um, it, I think it's really going to help the, the show as a whole yeah. because we, yeah, you really get to know someone when you're, when you're playing other people's songs together and right. as well as... And you're both bringing your bands with you, so everybody's going to be kind of interacting and Yeah, it'll be um, kind of a full van. We're all going to fit in one van. There's going to be maybe six or seven of us. Um, Who gets control of the, uh, the music? <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, I think that might be maybe Alex. He's, he's pretty good at DJing, okay. at being the DJ. But um, no, so it's Cass and Alex and Tom who, um, who recorded Brightly Painted One and Beck and Cody. Um, we're all going to figure out how to play on each other's stuff. Cool, and you're going to play some songs for us today as well. And the first one that I think that you're talking about playing is "Song of Wandering Angus." Is that yes. right? So tell us about that song. Uh, it's a song that I've known since I was a child, um, and I grew up listening to the version by Christy Moore. It's a traditional uh, folk song. I guess it's a music put to the words of um, W. B. Yeats. So it's a W. B. Yeats poem. A lot of people have put it to music, including Donovan. Oh, there you go. <laughs> um, but uh, I grew up listening to the Christine Moore version, so my uh, 
my take on the song uses Christy Moore's chords. And um, so I've been playing it maybe since I started learning the guitar when I was around 11 and I've kind of revisited it over the years. And when I um, was in New York and Hamish said, you know, why don't we record some songs after we've been playing these shows together, um, he suggested we, we record some songs and I didn't have a whole lot of material so I pulled out this cover, you know, this song, this WB Yeats poem um, and we recorded that um, that was a year and a half ago mm -hmm. and then when we got together again about six months ago to record some more songs we added another WB Yeats poem to the mix so there are two on this new EP and um, I don't know, there's like a sweet kind of theme that's running through the EP and uh, my English teacher when I was in third form which would be 13 uh, read out this poem Song of Wandering Angus and um, and because I knew the Christy Moore song I and immediately was uh, recognized it and was excited that he was reading it to our class but he said you know this is one of the most beautiful poems of all time and I think it so well, at that age, it's very you're very impressionable. That stuff sticks with you. Yeah, thirteen years old, right in. Exactly. Yeah. So I mean, it's in that kind of epic pastoral Yeats way. Um, and it is it is like very simply, very beautiful. So hopefully, I'll do it justice. I'm sure you will. Well, let's find out. We'll give it a listen now, and we'll be back talking some more with Holly. I went down to the hazel wood because a fire was in my head. I cut and peeled a hazel wand, hooked a berry to a thread. And when white moths were on the wing And moths like stars were flickering out I dropped the berry in a stream And hooked a little silver trout When I had laid it on the floor, I went to blow the fire aflame. When something rustled by the door, someone called me by my name. It had become a glimmering girl with apple blossoms in her hair. She called me by my name and rang, faded in the brightening air. And walk 
like a mile long dappled grass and pluck and pluck till times are done the silver apples of the moon and the golden apples of the sun Okay, we're back here with Tiny Ruins. Do you prefer to be called Tiny Ruins or Holly when I'm talking to you? Oh, I don't know what to say. I, I, I'm, I'm easy with that one. I, I, it can be whatever people want it to be. <laughs> I don't want to call you Tiny. That, some, would, that would be wrong. Some friends do. You know, they've got into the habit of, it's a kind of a joke now, but um, no, it can be It can be band, it can be me, it can be Well, I had a, I had a friend when I was growing up, everybody called Tiny, and of course the guy was huge. Uh -huh. was like, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. All right. Uh, so, so as we were just discussing off camera, you do have a career now. You've been doing this for oh, a number no. of years. And there, how would you say that your approach to songwriting has changed from one album to the next, and now you're on to thinking about the next mm. one? hasn't really changed at all. Um, I, I don't even know if I have an approach. I just, I just play around on the guitar, find some chords. I might have done some writing separately, which I'll... Okay. The, the approach is, is yeah, I'm, I don't really have one. <laughs> and um, it is just kind of a going with whatever the songs end up. Um, you know, you kind of know when a song is, is good enough that it's finished and that that's going to be a song for mm -hmm. Tiny Ruins. And then... You um, have songs that aren't right for Tiny Ruins? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what do you do with those? They just, they just sit there. A, a, a lot of songs get thrown out. It's, um, it's tough being a song, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it is. They, they have to go through a lot to, to make the cut. Um, but maybe one day I'll, I'll have some other experimental electronic project oh, cool. or something where I'll, where I'll re, you know, invigorate these, these, these ones that have been cast aside. I don't know. And you've also had an opportunity to work with a number of different people in the past couple of years when you've been touring and just working with them and meeting them on the road and whatever. How has that affected what you're doing? Um, sort of the influence of meeting other s musicians, yeah, like, songwriters. Uh, like Sharon Van Etten or David yeah. Lynch or whoever, you know, <laughs> you may run into. <laughs> um, oh, it definitely, yeah, it definitely, definitely influences your perspective. It opens up your, your mind a little bit more. Little windows open up in doorways that, that um, but also the world, yeah, it seems smaller and uh, I don't know. There's a lot of yeah. There's a lot you can. A lot of conversations still drift through my my mind, and I I often do think about people that I've met and um, other bands that I've been lucky enough to get to know. It's it's a wonderful part yeah, of being. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Well, one dance. person that you performed with recently was Robert Scott mm. uh, down at King's Arms, which I was fortunate enough to see. Uh, and so the next song that you're going to perform is one that you did with him. It's a John Cale song. I know. I'm Tell being, us all about it. I'm being you can't go wrong with a John Cale song. <laughs> he's, he's fantastic. Well, when um, Robert Scott, he, he suggested we learn this one to, to play at um, Sharon's show. And I, I just, I mean, I love that album. That, um, is that 1919? Paris 1919. Paris 1919. Mm -hmm. um, I really love that Child's Christmas in Wales song. I oh, yeah. always like that and listen to the album quite a bit. But I hadn't really, um, when you go to learn somebody else's song, it's almost like you fall in love with it a little bit because you get to know it so intimately. You get to take it apart and understand the chord structure. And, um, so yeah, this one really, uh, you know, I played it over and over again for a few days before the show with Bob. And um, So I'm being a bit cheeky by kind of 
poaching his I cover. Know. We want it. We want to hear it. But it's a good song. <laughs> it is indeed. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Well, let's see. Let's give it a listen. This is uh, Tiny Ruins with uh, John Cale's Andalusia. <laughs> doesn't alter your words never falter I love you I'll be here waiting later and later hoping the night will go away Andalusia castles and Christians Andalusia come to stay You were lost once before On a day much like this When you made up your mind not to come And I couldn't persuade you Oh, wait till tomorrow Oh, pass the time Andalusia, when can I see you? When it is snowing out again Farmer John wants you louder and softer, closer and nearer than again. Needing you, taking you, keeping you, leaving you for a year and a day to be sure. Your face doesn't alter your words never falter I love you Okay, we're back with Tiny Ruins and we have time for one more song that you're going to do. This is going to be one of your own. This is, And yes. it is Jamie Blue from Brightly Painted One. Yeah. What can you tell me about that song? Um, it's a song that I wrote after Cass and I had been uh, in Glasgow uh, back in 2012 when we were on this um, pretty, pretty grueling but very fun tour. It was about five months that we were just playing as much as we possibly could and we didn't have very much money and we were just staying on people's couches and you know um, yeah we were over there for five months and we were in Glasgow it was this cold rainy day and we we found ourselves in this uh, sort of little museum in the oldest house in Glasgow and there was a an image on the wall of a character named Jamie Blue and it just inspired me to write the song that um, is I haven't really played a lot on my own and I haven't um, performed it on anything like this, so I just thought it would be a different... It'd be something um, special. I mean, I'm looking yeah. forward to it. All right, excellent. Yeah. All righty. So we do urge people to come out and see you guys, you and Beck Runga, on tour yes. throughout the country. It's, <laughs> I can't wait to hear the songs that you guys have cooked up between the two of you. Because yeah. for me, that's always the most exciting part. I love cover versions. So mm -hmm. it's, it, it, it always tells me more about the song you find out new things about the song and about the people who are covering it because mm. you know yeah. I think you, sometimes you find out more about the artist who's covering it than their own songs just 
yeah. and you know how they listen to it and what they think is an interesting song by someone else. So, yeah, we'll, we'll be sitting and listening and thinking. All right. Well, thanks for coming by. Thank you for having me. All righty. This <laughs> is Jamie Blue. Lucky bravery blue. 